whether or not you are a parent, an educator, an administrator, a guidance counselor, one who specializes in social and emotional learning, either some of the above or none of the above, whatever title you have, we're so pleased to have you with us this evening. The reason for this webinar is quite simple. It is an opportunity for the members of our organization, NJAGC, to be able to let you know that we are here, first and foremost, as a resource for you. So on behalf of the board members and the trustees of the organization, I'd like to first introduce myself. My name is Mary Arufo. I am currently a trustee for NJAGC. I'm currently the assistant principal for the Dorothy Bullock School in Glassboro Public School District. I'm very pleased on behalf of each and every one involved with NJAGC to welcome you here this evening. I wanna remind everyone that this webinar will be recorded so that you can actually sit back and relax and listen to the offerings that we have for you tonight. You know, we really went about planning this webinar with the idea of presenting information that would be resourceful for you and think, allow you the opportunity to get to know us better. Um, I want to first thank everybody behind the scenes that is working with us tonight. Um, Elaine Chesbro, you'll be hearing from in just a bit, but Elaine, if you could advance to the next slide, that would be fantastic. Thank you. For those of you that have not been to the NJAGC website, it's quite easy to get to. One of the things that you'll find there is our mission statement. I'm not going to read it. You can see it on the slide in front of you, as well as visiting our website. We are committed to everything that is stated in our mission statement, and we continue to work hard to make that mission statement as real as can be. Our first presenter for you this evening is actually one of our parents. She serves currently as the treasurer of our organization. And as a parent, she offers a very unique insight into what NJAGC is all about. I'm very happy to introduce you to Amanda Limacy. Thanks, Mary. Yes, Mary already said I'm a parent. I have three boys, um, two in elementary school and one going to middle school, all gifted. Um, I got involved in NJAGC a few years ago when we were trying to figure out um, what was going on with my middle son and um, then discovered twice exceptionality and all the fun things that come with being gifted and having other developmental delays as is the case with my son. Um, but it's been a wonderful group to be a part of. And one of the main reasons why I joined and participated in Mom on the Board is because I hope to be able to grow our network of parents and hopefully we could support each other and share resources and, and connect. So, hi, <laughs> nice to meet everybody. Amanda, thank you so much. I know that um, on a personal note, your work and dedication to NJGC is um, unparalleled and we're grateful to have you as our new treasurer this year. We hope that anybody that is in the audience that is a parent um, and wishes to learn more about Amanda's story or exactly what we offer, um, that you will certainly reach out to us and we'll discuss that as we get uh, more towards the end of the webinar this evening. Our next uh, speaker, our next guest from NJAGC is a current trustee uh, with the organization who will be discussing parent resources. Um, and I'm very happy to introduce to you, Aiden Allman Cooper. Aiden? 
Good evening, everyone. And I'm so happy to be uh, joining uh, you all here tonight. And I'm really thrilled, especially, to be talking to you all about parent Uh-oh. Is Can you hear an issue with the audio? Can you guys hear me OK? No? You can, Mary? OK, great. All right, I'll, con I'll continue. OK, so the, what's really important is, is, is that with a lot of the resources that um, uh, parents need can also uh, really help ensure that gifted children are being um, served in the uh, best way. And the first resource that I'd like to talk about is the Gifted Child Society. Uh, the Gifted Child Society is an educational not-for-profit organization, and it has a ton of fun activities and enrichment opportunities. And that's from children from all the way from pre-K to high school. And what really happens is, is this, that there is an admissions process with that, and how they uh, have uh, kids join that organization is there are certain tests and criteria that you can find on the website, um, but they also offer uh, services such as IQ testing, uh, gifted assessments, a lot of really unique uh, uh, assessments to really understand whether or not your child um, might meet the criteria for giftedness. And it's a really great resource because it really helps um, kids bond well. They have summer camps, there's STEAM activities. There's a lot of fun and neat opportunities for kids to really explore um, who they are, what makes them gifted. And it's a really fun uh, learning process. Um, so the next resource that I'd like to talk about is the New Jersey Scholars Program. And the New Jersey Scholars Program is actually something that I actually uh, uh, did when I was um, uh, a, a kid a few years ago. Um, New Jersey Scholars Program is a tuition-free five-week rising uh, seniors program of any high school uh, in New Jersey, uh, private, public, alternative, charter, whatever it may be. And it's for kids who um, are identified as being ac academically gifted, and it's a really great program because they're able to kind of come together. They live tuition free at the Lawrenceville School down in Lawrenceville, New Jersey. And they have a lot of fun in doing a lot of really cool activities. And you have to be nominated by your school, but you can contact a guidance counselor. You can read more about it. Um, it's a really neat thing. The next thing I'd like to talk about is uh, SANG, which is uh, Supporting Emotional Needs for the Gifted. And it's a nonprofit network of people. Uh, and they help guide talented individuals. And that in also includes uh, quite exceptional meaning students that may have um, a disability. And uh, some online support groups are often held, annual conference, parent groups. It really helps parents deal with the emotional side at times that comes with um, having a child that may uh, be gifted. It's a really great resource. And uh, there's really um, economical membership opportunities. It's something to definitely look at. The next uh, resource is going to be the Gifted Homeschoolers Forum. That's really designed for people who um, have children that are gifted and choose to um, homeschool, sometimes uh, permanently, temporarily. It's a really uh, great resource. And the great thing about it is, is that the Homeschool Forum really stresses on the value of uniqueness and humanity of each person within the community. And they really try to give as many types of resources, activities, different types of lessons, different types of ways in which kids can get a better understanding as to living in a different type of educational environment where they live and they go to school. And it's a really fun way for parents and students not to be alone and they can do activities together. It's a really, really great program. And the uh, second to last uh, resource is going to be understand.org. And that is a really amazing resource for um, people who are neurodivergent in other ways meaning uh, students and uh, uh, parents and um, anyone that really has been in that world where they have um, unique learning differences, whether it be ADHD, whether it be um, some type of uh, learning disability, dyslexia, they have helped over 20 million people uh, discover uh, more about their learning differences. And it's something that is a real value. And you can learn more about some of their mission as well as some of the resources such as the um, activities as well as um, the ways in which people can unlock their full learning potential. And then the final research I'd like to mention is going to be NAGT, which is the National Association for Gifted Children. Right now, you guys are seeing the New Jersey Association for Gifted Children. That's the division of the overarching organization. And what's great about NAGT is, is that they help support and uh, embrace the uh, growth and development of gifted and talented children, obviously. 
through education, advocacy, community building, and research. So there's so many different things that you can do with this organization. There's advocacy measures, there's ways to improve curriculum, there's professional development. Let's say you're a teacher and you want to learn more about how to be a better uh, gifted and uh, talented teacher. There are ways to do that. There's so many different ways in which you can go about it that is just quite frankly really remarkable. And I'm so happy and pleased to be part of this uh, organization. And uh, I think I'd like to turn it now over to Diane, who's going to finish up talking about the uh, other resources. Thank you very much. Thank you, Aiden. And yes, next up is Diana Wisniewski. She has additional resources to share at this time. Diana? Great, thank you. Um, I'm going to talk about the Center for Talented Youth at Johns Hopkins University. It's been around since 1979. It has served over 200,000 students. It really has three programs that students can participate in. One, they have an online program. I had a student, student take that this summer, a sixth grader. He didn't want to go all the way to DC so far from home. So he took an online three week summer course in one of the sciences. I'm not, I don't remember which one he did. But I've also had a student who's gone in, in person in eighth grade to their on summer, on campus summer program for three weeks. And he loved it there too. That, so there's the online version, there's the campus summer programs. They're both three weeks in the summer. And then they also have an asynchronous accelerated accelerated courses that you can take throughout the year. For instance, I have a student who's going to Princeton in the fall and she wanted to take Calc 3, but she's in every honors program. And, and she just didn't want to be set tied to a time because she had tennis and all those other AP classes. So I highly recommend it. My students have all had a great time there in every which way that you can go. Um, they are, oh, by the way, uh, they offer programs from second grade through 12th grade. Another great resource is the Heroes Academy. I met Rita Voigt, the director of the program, um, in 2007 when I moved to New Jersey. And she had a 12-year-old back then who was ready for a, um, college courses, level courses in the sciences, in the math areas, computer programming. And his middle school just could not accommodate him. So she made arrangements. She fought for it and she made arrangements with Rutgers University. And now she has established, she established a little school there and it has grown so much that now she has a full academy. They offer weekend classes, um, week after school classes and, and summer programs. They are primarily in the sciences, robotics, computer programming, STEM, and things of that nature. Um, I went to one of her open houses and she has them frequently. So you can go onto the site and you will see that um, go to one of her open houses. I went to one, I observed sixth graders um, in an astronomy class and the teacher asked, the instructor asked them a question and they all started popping things back and forth, discussing it. And they were far beyond anything I had ever learned in, in science myself. So let me pass it back to you, Mary. Thank you very much, Diana. Appreciate that. To our audience, just a reminder that this webinar is being recorded. So far, you have uh, listened to our representatives that have addressed both um, personal parent um, experiences and involvement with NJAGC, in addition to just a sprinkling of parent resources, albeit very important ones at that. Next, we'd like to present to you um, some resources that are, have been cultivated by um, three individuals, um, myself, Kristen Baker, and once again, Diana Wisniewski. I'm going to begin um, with sharing with some of our educators out there a couple of links to programs that I've had great success with. I will begin. Um, Elaine, if you would not mind advancing the, um, the slides for us. If you were at our annual conference back in March, 
you may have seen the offering or participated in the, um, the, the presentation that I did present on the stock market game. Um, prior to my role, um, I was the coordinator and teacher for gifted programming for Glassboro Public Schools. The stock market game in New Jersey is a free offering. Um, it is naturally a financial literacy offering. However, there is much more to the stock market game than researching stocks, bonds, and mutual funds. There are also offerings that involve writing. There are also offerings that involve competitions, which can also involve elected officials in um, our state. Um, these particular offerings make the stock market game a uh, much sought after uh, resource or uh, for educators as they can really branch what this program offers to their kids. The next offering that I'd like to talk about is from the New Jersey State Bar Association, and that is the Law Adventure Program, and specifically for the Mock Trial Program. I've had great success with my seventh graders in uh, participating in the Mock Trial Program. Um, trials are put together by seventh and eighth graders across the state of New Jersey. That's right. Your kids can actually write uh, trials that are based on either two different types of law that are selected by a particular group of attorneys that are working within uh, the law adventure game. Um, it is thought provoking. It promotes obviously higher order thinking skills for our students. It introduces them to what occurs in a trial, both civil and criminal. Um, this also helps to um, really allow our kids to work on their public speaking, their debating skills, and so much more. Finally, I've had so much fun involving the Rube Goldberg Initiative and what the Rube, Gold, Rube Goldberg Institute offers. Check out their website for some really fun activities and challenges. Doing a very simple task, but sourcing it out in such a way that kids get to unleash their creativity, work like engineers, solve problems, and getting to that end point makes a classroom fun, invigorating, and one that you would wanna be in. Those are the three offerings that I wanted to speak about um, for our, specifically our educators tonight. I hope you'll get a chance to visit. Next. I'd like to bring back Diana so that she can speak about the offerings that she'd like to make to our educators. Okay, thanks, Mary. Um, I'm gonna, I am actually going to take a little ploy off on yours. Can you see my screen? You can see my screen, can you not? Oh, we got knocked out. Diana, you're on fine. I'm fine? Okay, thank you. My yeah. apologies. I wanted to make sure you could see it. I'm going to take a spin off of what Mary said because I use the New Jersey State Bar Foundation materials as well. We do not participate in, our, in their mock trials. Um, in the mini courts for the elementary, but they do have programs for as far down as second graders. What I use is their trial jurors materials, and I also use their um, plagiarism handouts. We have, there's a school program called um, One School, One Judge, and there is a judge assigned in every county. They have lots of judges who will come out and speak to your students about the law. And I have my ch children study the, trial jurors come up with questions that they couldn't answer for themselves. And he comes in and they have a great discussion before we start our mock trial section. 
Uh, we do cases like Lincoln's Conspiracy, Sacco and Vincetti, Galileo, Joan of Arc. And so what we use is the University of Kansas, Missouri. It's called UMKC, but we supplement it with these materials and the One School, One Judge program. The other programs that are great resources, my school is in enrichment. I teach middle school. This is a secondary program. It's called Next Generation Personal Finance. And I actually just finished doing a crypto class just for myself because I wanted to know more about it. Um, but um, they offer PD, free PD. Um, my school has me teach since sixth grade requires you to do the finance and tech lit in sixth grade, they have me embedded in our enrichment program. I have students for a full semester every day. And so we do things like careers, um, savings, budgets, uh, paying for college. And so, and they have lots of games. They have all the lesson plans already written up. You're allowed to download them, change them however you want, pull what you need, and it's already done for you. I love doing do nows with this to get them started. We do careers, all those different segments. And I found that they're very successful. Um, and you get to meet virtually for an hour for these PDs with teachers from all over the country. Also, before I got involved with them, and I still use them, is a program called EverFi. Um, the NJ, NGPF is .com. EverFi is everfi.net. And these also offer no cost digital lessons for students, but they're more widespread. They have kindergarten through high school, um, whereas the other program is only secondary, starting maybe with fifth graders, you could use it. But this program also offers mental health, um, healthy practices, um, nutrition. I've recommended this to the gym teachers. I actually send the mental health programs to the counselors, and they also have literacy, history, um, history, and I actually science and math. So I got involved because of the finance part originally because I needed to meet that, that need. But they are another wonderful resource and they too have, it's all animated so the children stay engaged and it's a one, wonderful program as well, but it covers a bigger level. The, something that I thought of after the fact, and I just wanted to throw it out there just before uh, the pandemic, my, I don't know if you know it, but the Microsoft stores offer Microsoft product classes for free if you wanna learn about something. And it happens my school paid for, um, for us to have four days for those who wanted to go to actually have a private sessions um, and I wanted to know more about minecraft.edu. So um, that I went to Bridgewater and they had wonderful, uh, and they taught me about Minecraft. So my students can do presentations if they want using Minecraft. I think they did it with, uh, we do a water filtration project in eighth grade and they actually showed what chemicals would, could be mixed and what ones couldn't be mixed and they could do it in such a way that was safe. And the last thing, and I know this wasn't on the, was, I don't know if you know, and I guess this should have been on the other side um, before, but Harvard has a secondary summer program for high ability students. It's a seven week summer program where they earn, earn college classes and they can apply for it. And the applications come out in December. And I actually had, my custodian's daughter was doing it for a couple of years and that's how I found out about it. And she was, and now I've had a student just go, she did con law this summer and she wants to be a lawyer. So it was a fantastic program for her. And she actually can now go, if she goes again next year, then it's for 16 to 19 year olds. Um, and you get college classes and you actually make an edge way in to get into Harvard. Thank you. Some, you can unshare me, thank you. Thanks, Diana. Uh, continuing on with our final presentation is uh, Trustee Kristen Baker. Thank you. We have heard about a number of really wonderful programs and websites. And so I wanted to share something that's just simply a lesson idea 
that's an activity that you can do with your students at a variety of different age levels, different grade levels, different content levels. So all I have here is a whiteboard and a marker. And if I were in my classroom, I would have a bucket of colored blocks. You know, the ones I'm talking about, they're about an inch square, they're red, green, yellow, blue. And we've all got something like that. If you don't have exactly that, you have something that's markers that come in different colors. By markers, I mean like little counters, little teddy bears or little balls or something. So um, we're going to work with three colors, which are red, blue, and green. And if I was setting up this activity in my classroom, I would start out first by just having the children write R equals, B equals, and G equals, okay? And that is our goal. We want to find out the values for these three colors. So then I'm going to come around with my bucket of blocks. I'm gonna rattle them around and I'm gonna bring them around to Mary and say, okay, Mary, you're going to take out three blocks. What colors are the blocks that you pulled out? And they're only red, blue, and green. So they've gotta be some combination of red, blue, and green. What did you find, Mary? So Kristen, I'm gonna say two blue and one green. Okay, now I would write that on the board as B plus B plus G equals, and that would be 12. Nope, I'm, yep, that would be 12. I just have to reverse two because I gave you a wrong number, my mistake. That's fine. Blue plus blue plus green is 12. So now I'm gonna rattle those around again. I'm going to come to Diana. Diana, are you still with us with the microphone? Want to pull out three blocks? I can pull out red, any blue, three green. blocks? Any three? three? Blocks. Red, blue, green, as long as they're not blue, blue, and green. But if you pull the same, I'll say, okay, pull again. Okay. Red, green, blue. Okay, Diana has pulled a blue, a green, sorry, trying to do this without getting a full view. Blue, green, and red. And I do try to write them in the same order as I've written them in the first question, just so the kids can start to see the patterns. So red, green, and blue together. Now we have 19. Okay, now that tells us already that the red is worth more than the blue because when I swapped out a blue for a red, the value went up. I start this activity with second graders. I usually start with just two colors, but then we build on the skill. Do I have someone else who can pull out three colors? I don't know who else is on microphones. Connie, do you have a microphone? Absolutely. Ready? I have a green, a green, and a red. A green, a green, and a red. So I green do. and green and red. If we have green, green, and red, that would be 16. Okay. Anybody start to think they know what they are yet? No, but Diane is beating me. <laughs> is she working it through? <laughs> okay. Okay, green, green, and red. Now, if the children are looking totally lost, at this point, I might have them just pull out two. Anybody feeling totally lost, like we need only two blocks this time? Or so is green zero? Is green that? zero? No, I think. Wait, well, don't um, tell me what you think it is, but what oh. we'll do, we'll pull out, pull out the next set, and then you tell me what the value is. Okay, I'm working you on it. it. Okay? So yep. Diana, you, what set is our next set of blocks? Why do you want me to give you a new set of blocks? Because it's well, your turn. Can... I'll give it to <laughs> somebody <laughs> else because I think I've already solved it. Give Aiden, well, what that's block? why you're going to pick any. Okay, Mary, you pull the blocks out and Diana will tell us what they're worth. Go ahead, Mary, pull three blocks. Blue, red, blue. Blue and blue and red. Now, before we had blue, blue, green, this time we have blue, blue, and red. So Diana, if you think you know what it is, blue and blue and red is worth how much? Okay. Okay. 
to let, be. No, don't tell us all the values. Oh, Just right, tell us right, the right. You don't want to take all the fun away. <laughs> Just join me as the as the leader by telling yes. me the value of the total here. Okay. okay? I think it's twenty. Okay, so it is twenty-one. Oh, so close. Did I miss add? Oh, 20. Oh, thank you, Diana, but we are not quite there. So if I have a blue, a blue, and a red, I have 22. Okay? Yeah. Okay, Connie, can you pick out four blocks this time? Pressure. Okay, green, green, red, red. Green plus green plus red plus red. Trying to make, oh, I know I can move across the board a little bit. You know, I was misbehaving earlier and Elaine muted me. Green <laughs> plus green plus red plus red. Now, if I have two greens and two reds, Now I have 28. Kristen, you have an attendee who possibly has an idea. Okay, can you relay a message or I don't know how I can get to the chat What in the, at this point. Uh, no, sorry, it's okay. I, I'll take care of it. Okay, Mary? I think I have an answer. Okay, don't tell me the answer yet, okay? Okay. You can go to, what I'd like to do instead of going to the next answer is I would like to show you what I would do as a teaching strategy at this point if the students are stuck, okay? Right now I have green plus green plus red equals 16. Oh, look. And I just put a box around it. And then hopefully some of the kids are going, oh, you know, that is swallow the butterflies that moment. Oh, okay. So then what we've done is we've given them a way to isolate the variable. Okay. Does that work with what you were thinking about, Mary? It does, I hope. <laughs> okay. So now we'll go one more step. Give me um, three. Three more blocks. Who wants to pull another three or another four? I'll do it. Okay, go ahead, Aiden. Call me All right. Uh Red, blue, green, red. And then okay, red, blue, green, and red. So yeah. I want blue, green, red, red. Okay. Because okay. I want to keep them in the same order. It helps the kids to see it in oh, okay. the same order. So blue plus green plus red plus red. And then again, we have the blue, green, red up here, you know? So blue plus green plus red plus red. Let me think it through so I know what I've got because I have my little cue card down on the table. So. 31. Uh, what's that? <laughs> that, was, that was 31 from Amanda who's at the piano concert. Okay, <laughs> okay one second. I've got. Um, Plus, okay, Mary, you said you thought you knew what it was. You want to tell me what the value is? What you think it is? Yes. What do you think it is? Now, if I had a few people who think they know what it is now, I would take all their answers here. So Mary, what do you think it is? I believe that green is a value. No, 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 no the total. Oh. Don't tell me these yet. Not yet, okay? Sorry about that. Yes. We're letting everybody join it, like everybody's getting on the bus here. Okay. So do you have a total answer here? 31. Yes. Wait, Amanda, did you have an answer? Amanda said 31. She's Amanda at the piano concert. Do I have any other answers? I'm with them. Connie says 31. Okay, I'm gonna tell you guys this one is indeed 31. So you see how you can get people involved step by step and you can get them to join in on giving the answer. And now we can go back to breaking it down. If we have green plus green plus red plus red is 28, 
we know green plus green plus red is 16, then we can say 16 plus red is 28. So that means red is 12. 12. Okay, so if red is 12, I can plunk that up here. 16 is 12 plus two greens. So then green is two. That uh, green is two and two. blue is five. five. Okay. So that's the basics of the game. I got this from Rob Rice at the Association of Teachers of Mathematics of New Jersey oh, more than 10 years ago. I play this from second grade through sixth grade. When I play it with the little kids, we start with just two blocks. We use whole number values. We use some that are far apart, like the two and the 12. But then when we get up into fourth grade, we start mixing in some fractions. When we get to fifth grade, we can start with some decimals. When we get into sixth grade, we can start into some positive and negative integers. We can start to group them together. So instead of B plus B plus G, then we have 2B. Okay, so now we're starting into some algebraic notation and then also maybe you want to get into the the proper lowercase variables that's kind of a sloppy on the G but there we go. Okay, you see how we can move this up through the grades. So it's a very flexible activity and it's one that you can play in just a couple minutes and yet you can grow it with the kids. Another thing that I just wanted to mention as a similar activity that is on a website is which one doesn't belong, W-O-D-B. I will show you just one quick one from that. Which one of these numbers doesn't belong? Nine. Nine, 16, 25, and 43. Why do you think nine doesn't belong? I'm going with nine because it's not a double digit. 43. Why doesn't 43 belong? It's not a cube. It's not a, oh. not a square number. Not a square. Or square is okay. Well. But is there another reason why 43 doesn't belong? Yes, there is. Prime number. Why, what? Prime number. It's a prime number. So we have a prime number and we have a not square number. Okay, so that means these three are all squares. We have a single digit number. What else is going on? There's 16, one. 16 is the only even number. 16 is the only even number. But what else? There's more. And Ones, there's tens, twenties. Nine is the only digit that doesn't add up to seven when you Sums add the digits. digits. Sums mm -hmm. of digits. Right. Oh. There is so much to be found in these numbers. And this is just one example. They have, as with this game, they have on this website, the people who run the website have examples from the very simple to very complex. Very simple can be even just pictures. And then the very complex go into math that is over my head up here. We're not even getting to those, but there's so much in between. And I have seen kids um, fifth and sixth grade, once they're introduced to the activity and led into it, they can come up with long lists of things like, oh, the sum of this, this is the only one that has a sum of squares that's not between this range. I mean, it's crazy, the things they can find. So it causes them to really start to look at number theory and patterns of numbers. So great activity also. And that, as I said, is in, uh, just so you can find that website, which one doesn't belong? If you just Google which one doesn't belong number game, that's all you need. It's hey, on Kristen, that. Oh, that was that was excellent. I was gonna say nine's div divisible by three, mm -hmm. 16 okay. by four, 25 by five, and 43 uh -huh. is the outlier. That was awesome. There, that was there's awesome. more. There's even more. To, there's so much more to that. I leave them up for a couple of days and they keep adding to it. <laughs> and if I have two cat classes compete with each other, then I'll have them do it on the board, but then I'll cover parts of it with paper. So I'd say, which one do you want to hide so they don't see this? And they, they can try to find it. So they, they get very motivated on that. So, you know, Kristen, just, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. I was just going to say um, to our audience, one of the things that I think educators 
really appreciate is the opportunity to be able to take something with them and apply it, if not tomorrow, but certainly down the road. So thank you for that. Um, Kristen, did you want to just speak briefly yes. about the consortia that you're involved with, please? That was the other thing I wanted to uh, mention to everybody is, as with sharing the lessons here, when we can share ideas with each other, all of our programs can be stronger and we can do more for our students. And that's something that I've had the opportunity to do in Warren County as the as part of the Warren County Consortium for Student Enrichment. And I know a number of our other presenters have been part of consortia as well. Connie was actually part of Warren County Consortia before I was. I think um, Diana is part of one. I think Mary is part of a different one in different areas of the state. And by a consortia, what I mean is the different school districts in a region or in a county or in a part of the state larger than a single region, they have grouped together with um, plans to coordinate services or to share resources or to share professional knowledge to find ways to better serve their students. And um, we have an event coming up in September, October, probably October, although we haven't established a date yet, when we will have a webinar specifically around what the consortia of New Jersey are doing to help our gifted students and what you can do to be part of a consortia or if there is not one in your area, how you can look to get one started. Kristen, thank you so much. Um, you know, it's, it's an area that uh, we certainly hope that those that are educators that are with us tonight will reach out to our organization again We'll speak more to that at the end of the webinar on getting uh, additional information. And just in honoring the time that we have left, we do have a, a couple of additional speakers. If we could go back to our presentation, please. While that's taking place, I'm very pleased to introduce um, our new president for this coming year, uh, 2022 23, and uh, very happy to introduce. Connie Drake O'Brien uh, to our audience this evening. Connie? Hi, everybody. So um, I personally get very excited when Kristen <laughs> starts talking about math and uh, Diana starts bringing up her ideas and Mary starts talking about her presentations um, and Elaine keeps us all on track. So uh, it was laughing earlier because I was talking at and Elaine muted me, so I behaved myself. Um, but it's all in good fun. We really like what we do here. Um, we have a lot of enjoyment in what we do in getting together and seeing how we can better prepare our students for their education, for their world, for their future. And we do that in a lot of great ways. And one of them is our conference. And I wanna take a minute and talk about our conference. I know it was brought up a few minutes ago, but what we just did with Kristen that's an example of a presenter. A presenter will get there and they will talk about, hey, I have this great idea. Let me show you what you can do in your classroom too. Kristen, Mary, Diana, Elaine, myself, we have all been presenters at the New Jersey Association for Gifted Children Conference. And we have presented not only and talk to people, not only as teachers, but for many of us also as parents, because how did I get connected to this organization? Well, I got connected because I was a teacher, but I would go down years ago, the conference would be on Friday all day. And then I stayed overnight and my kids met me there. And then I stayed on as a parent and we would have activities there as parents and children. We now do other activities with parents and children and other events. And we're talking about getting some of those up and going this year. Um, and we'll wait on that a little bit because some of those are in the background getting put together and organized. But our conference this year is March 17th, little dear to me, St. Patrick's Day. It is the conference center at Mercer. We start bright and early in the morning around 8, 8.30, somewhere around there, and we go until about three. It is a whirlwind day of opportunities for you to listen to presenters, keynotes, 
coordinate with other parents, teachers, administrators. Um, it really is an opportunity for you to reach out and connect with others that are involved in gifted education in the state of New Jersey. So if you've not been to our conference, I can't talk enough about coming because it is what got me to stay. And to this day where I am now, I'm not even gonna tell you how many years later, I'm willing to be president and come on and be a part of this organization in a higher level. The next thing I wanna talk about is webinars. So here's an example of a webinar. This is the first of the webinars we're doing this year. This was Kristen's idea years and years ago. Kristen kept saying, we need to have a webinar. And I was like, okay, Kristen, we'll get to it. And COVID-19 hit and I said, okay, Kristen, we're doing it. And um, I was uh, excited. I got talking to Elaine and Mary and a few other people that are no longer in our organization at this point in time. And the next thing you know, we were up and running and we're doing webinars and we are always looking for ideas. If you have something that you think, hey, this would be a great idea for a webinar, let us know. We've done webinars that have been for teachers, students, administrators. Um, we try to reach everyone. We talk about social emotional learning. How are our students affected um, with COVID? How are they affected with the pressures of being a gifted student? How are you as a teacher affected with the pressures of being a gifted student or trying to work through just COVID in general? We did a great session with one of our members who came in and told us how to relax. It was wonderful. I took it back to my school and said, you guys need to watch this, learn how to breathe. So we're always trying to move forward and help whomever and whoever we can in our organization. We also have stories that connect us. Mary, I was on a bike ride. I was riding my bike, Mary called me. I said, I got a great idea. What do you think about this? And Mary said, yeah, I was thinking about it too. She came up with the name and we now have something called Stories That Connect Us. This is where we reach out to people who are eminent in the field, who have a story that is connected to giftedness in some way. And Mary interviews them. She is fantastic, um, top of her field as an interviewer. And just if you've not heard of Joe Zuli, Sally Reese, you've heard of Aiden. Um, and we've also done on social emotional uh, learning specifically as it relates to um, suicide and how it has affected our population. Those are available on our website. And then resources and updates. What do we have for resources? Well, we have discussion groups about books. Have you read this book? What do you think about it? What resource have you found that you think is important? I know it's an area that we really need to build on to start helping us reach out to everyone. I'm not gonna show you, but over there, I have a pile of books stacked this high that I have to read that are related to Gifted World. Um, and it's so hard to always find that time, but that is my goal for this year. What is something you've read recently? What is something you saw recently? We want to hear it. We want to share it with our members. And how we do that many times is through something we call, um, uh, oh, somebody help me out here. Design. What is it? I just blanked. Come on. What is, what is the, we all, we're all blanking. Mary, what's it called? Um, that Michelle runs? No, the magazine, the, 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 oh, uh, say it, Kristen. Promise. 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 Well, promise. Newsnet. And then, Newsnet. and then we all, Newsnet, Newsnet, right. So promise and Newsnet are e-line magazines and, and newspapers that are on online. So, wow. Sorry about that, guys. It just comple completely blanked. Um, so we do have publications that try to connect you and resources that are available to you. And we do our best to keep you update with what is happening nationally and here in our state and locally. What is the local um, organization, lo local school, uh, local consortia doing in your area? One thing, two things actually I'd like to mention that came up earlier. One is if you don't know about it, check out your 4-H. 
because your local 4-H is supported by your Rutgers Cooperative Extension. Those are free and available and are fabulous for gifted students. And secondly, Diana brought up about the Microsoft um, uh, education program for uh, Minecraft. I was lucky to be just recently certified as an instructor and a mentor. Um, that program was all done online. Um, and so if you're interested in all, at all in that, I would love to have a discussion with you. So I think I kept to my time limit. Thank you so much, Connie. Appreciate everything that you just shared with our audience. Once again, a reminder that this will be recorded so that you can look at it at your leisure. As we round out the webinar this evening, I next would like to introduce to you Elaine Chesborough. She's going to be speaking briefly about the work that we do within advocacy. Elaine? Thanks, Mayor. I'm speaking on behalf of the advocacy team. Jen Madsen is our VP of Advocacy, and we have some of our advocacy committee members here with us tonight. But I wanted to just give you a quick overview of what we do and what we have done. Advocacy supports the national efforts. We were, New Jersey was instrumental in getting our legislators on board for supporting the Javits funding, which is the only national money available for gifted education. Um, so that's one of the one of the national efforts that we're um, we're working with, increasing funding for gifted. We are also um, lucky enough to be part of the strengthening gifted and talented education um, advisory council, the SCATIAG, um, affectionately known as, and we work with the Department of Ed on providing guidance to districts on things such as ad, uh, identification, programming, professional development, social emotional learning, and implementing the law. We also try to work on building and connecting with others who have an interest in gifted. So we partner with the New Jersey Education Association. Um, we're working on partnering with the Council for Exceptional Children and some other organizations. We work with the PSA, the Principals and Supervisors Association as well. And then of course, legislation. We were part of the effort that wrote and passed the Strengthening Gifted Law. And we are looking at some other legislation to help gifted students as well. Um, if you're ever interested in joining us, we have a great committee and we're always looking for more members. So thank you. Thanks, Mayor. Thank you so much, Elaine. Appreciate that. Um, advocacy is an extremely important part of this organization and um, there's so much that has been done. Um, a spotlight has been shown on our state because of this work and there's um, so much respect that I personally have for this particular committee. To, to uh, round out the webinar tonight, we will finally hear from our co-vice uh, president of membership, uh, Diana Wisniewski. Uh, our other VP was unable to meet, make uh, the webinar this evening. We're so sorry for that. However, Diana, we're so pleased to have you just touch on some of the benefits of joining uh, NJAGC. Diana? Thank you. I think a lot of them have already been touched upon. When they um, Connie talked about the quarterly electronic copies of the newsletter promise, um, news, uh, the Newsnet was also mentioned. Um, you've already, Elaine's already talked about advocacy and the representation that we do in DC and Trenton and at the national level. Um, there are discounts for if you join, if you're not a member already, then there's discounts um, for our annual conference that Connie mentioned is next March 17th. Um, we have professional, uh, Amanda does a wonderful job with webinars for parents. Mary, you're involved there too. And um, with, and Mary does do a great job. Um, we do have, there was one thing that wasn't mentioned and there are mini grants and there's some little scholarships and awards that are given out. So that'll be coming out this fall. Um, the applications go in and they're usually due sometime in December. They can be in art, literature, um, art, literature. What's the third one? Somebody help me. <laughs> but video, they, there's yeah, video. video. Video, that's the one. Thank you so much. And um, 
then we also music too right and also isn't there a composition one as well yeah i said literature i that's how writing no, no, so, no, music they, composition, like putting music together and oh, composing Oh, music it. composition. Thank That's you. That's our new one. Thank you. All right. And then um, we also have speakers that can come out to your school, to, um, to parents' organizations, and to homeschool organizations. If you're looking for someone to speak on gifted education, we have a lot of experts on our, on our as members on our board. And then there, as you can see, this whole evening tells you that there's lots of networking opportunities for parents, for teachers of gifted, edu gifted children all across the state. Thank you. Thank you, Diana. At this time, um, we do have a few minutes left until we reach um, our hour. Um, what we'd like to just say to all of our attendees tonight if there's a question or an inquiry that you have for us, please put it in the chat. If we're unable to answer it at this moment, uh, we can assure you that we will reply to your inquiry in a very timely fashion. Um, I know that Elaine is going to put into the chat the email address that you are welcome to utilize if you would, if you have a question that comes up uh, later this evening, later this week, that email is njagc at njagc.org. Once again, it will be found in the chat. Uh, Elaine has timely uh, placed it in uh, the chat at this time. To our attendees, whether once again, you are a parent, an educator, an administrator, a guidance counselor, a student, none of the above, some of the above. If there's something that you are looking for from our organization, if there's a way that we can serve you, perhaps it's not been mentioned tonight, and we've provided a number of resources, you learned a game tonight, which is so awesome. Um, there's so many things that this organization does. The one thing that I'm so proud of, I don't know many organizations that comes out at this time of the year to really dive deep into what the offerings are. I'm proud to say that the New Jersey Association for Gifted Children does that because we care. So we wanna thank everybody that's in attendance this evening. We hope that you'll be in touch. Don't be afraid to give us your ideas, your thoughts, or your questions. We wanna wish everyone a very safe and healthy, productive school year ahead. Please be in touch. Thank you so much, everyone.